in this video we are going to see how to create and use a view box control in WPF. A view box control is used to stretch and scale uh, elements placed on it. So let's uh, start by creating a new project. In, for my sample, I use Visual Studio 2010. If you do not have Visual Studio 2010 and using Visual Studio 2008, you may have to install WPF Toolkit for that. So let's create a new project. I click on File Menu, New Project. Now you want to make sure in the left side, Install Templates, Visual C Sharp under that Windows. In the right pane, make sure you have WPF application selected. I'm going to give my application name Viewbox Sample. Click OK. This will create a new project. And as soon as the project is created, you'll be you'll be you'll see the designer. Now to create viewbox element in XAML creates a view box control. I'm going to give it a name, say view box one. I'm going to set its width and height. to 200 pixels each. Now I'm also going to set its vertical alignment and horizontal alignments. Vertical alignments to top and horizontal alignment to left. I'm also going to give a little margin Let's say 10 from the top, 10 from the left, 0, 0. Now, what I'm going to do is let's place a an ellipse on this view box and see how it goes. So I create an ellipse. Ellipse control. By using ellipse element, I give it the width of ellipse, I give 100. And height, I give say 50. I also fill this ellipse with the red color. So as you can see in this designer, my ellipse is created. And by default, height and width of this ellipse are 50 and 100 pixels respectively. Now, what one thing I'm going to change is in my view box code. See, this is my view box code. Here, I'm going to change the stretch property of view box say fill stretch property has four four options it can be fill it can be none it can be uniform on uniform to fill so as soon as i change my stretch property of view box to fill you can see even though my ellipse width is 100 height is 50 pixels but ellipse actual UI shows that it's fill in the view box. So no matter what height or width you set or of that ellipse control or any other control placed on view box, view box actually controls it. So this actually helps when you, you don't know the actual height and width of the controls placed on a view box. Uh, so this is how you can actually create and use the view box control in XAML. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to create a view box control dynamically in your code. This was just design time. So I'm going to do is let's do one thing. Let's comment this code right here. And I'm going to give this grid name because I'm going to use this in my code behind. Let's say I'll call it root layout. Now F7, F7 will take you direct to the code behind for this, this window. Here I'm going to create a method called private. Actually, I already have a code, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to code my 
copy my code and we can just explain it to save some time. So here I have a method called create view box dynamically. In this I create a view box object using the view box class in WPF. And then I set the stretch direction which is both means horizontal and vertical. Then I set the stretch to fill. I set max width 300, max height 200. Then I create an ellipse. And then I do set height of ellipse to 100 and width of ellipse to, let's change to 50. And I fill with the red color here. And then what I do is I set viewbox.child to my ellipse. Now viewbox can only have one item on it, one element on it. So you cannot actually place multiple elements on it. Now in the end what I do is to my root layout I add this dynamic view box and now I'm going to call this method after initialize components. Now if you click F5, hit F5 to build and run this project, let's see what our output looks like. So this is how my output looks like. As you can see, even though my width and height of this circle ellipse was 150, but it's filled in the view box. That's all.